Folks, on Thursday, the Tennessee State House of Representatives uh, will vote on a bill to dismantle TSU's Board of Trustees. Last week, the state Senate uh, vote, it fell along party lines 25 to 6 with all Republicans voting to vacate uh, and reconstitute the Board of Trustees. But could we see changes in the House? Joining me now from Brooklyn, New York, uh, is uh, the Tennessee State University National Alumni President, uh, Charles Galbraith. Uh, Charles, glad to have you on the show. So um, this has been uh, a consistent battle. We've been talking the last year, year and a half, uh, the attacks on Tennessee State. And, and I dare say these attacks, they only really begin to come after that committee reported that Tennessee State was owed $500 million by the state, and then Tennessee State asked for $250 million of that money, then all of a sudden, uh, you begin to see Republicans begin to make demands and begin to question and, and challenge and say, oh, there are financial issues. Uh, they will talk about the dormitory issues. Well, first of all, the dormitory issue was a good thing because the enrollment was exploding. Had they been given the money they were supposed to give, they would have had the facilities. And so it seems to me that because Tennessee State dared demand the money they've always been owed, all of a sudden Republicans then said, now we want to really control the state's only public HBCU. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, Brother Martin. Uh, this is a very historic time in Tennessee State University's history. We are at the top of the charts, but we are also facing a lot of challenges. And so when we think about what has happened over the last year, we have seen this administration own up to challenges that were faced uh, in front of them and that were exposed, of course, um, within the, the hearings and, and with several of the, the dialogues that have had to happen. But what we must also see is the commitment from the state of Tennessee to continue the excellence that is expected from Tennessee State University. And so what we're looking at is we are looking at a state that is very difficult for a historically black college and university to be in. The number one college and university would be Tennessee State University, the number one HBCU in Tennessee. And what we need is legislators that understand, first of all, the history of Tennessee State University, but second of all, that the faces that are there are majority black and brown faces. And so what we need is a, 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 a legislature that understands the needs of the HBCU and of those students. Uh, you had the state controller who uh, made a number of allegations uh, in a, a report. They then asked for an audit. Audit's costing $2 million. His was still crazy to me. The audit has not been returned. It's not being completed, yet they're trying to make these changes. Normally, you wait until after an audit that gives you the roadmap to what kind of changes you need to make. Correct. And, and that's what's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that um, our administrators, our students, our alumni, we're forced to be advocates and activists. Um, and, you know, we love Tennessee State University and we don't mind if that is where our service leads us, if that is where our funds, if that is where our voice is needed. We don't mind. But it's unfortunate that we must fight for uh, our history and for our legacy and that we must fight uh, against the powers that would make ac accusations with attitudes. That's the part of it. It's one thing to, to identify areas that could be better. That is something that we want to happen with Tennessee State University. We want to remain excellent. And if you must point out an area where we can improve, we love that. It is the extra attitudes and, and the extra conversations around, uh, you know, mismanagement and, and just some of the things that have happened. And, and to your point, a lot of those have come up after we have recognized that we are owed this money from the state of Tennessee. Well, here's a perfect example. Uh, go to my, uh, first of all, let me pull up in one second here. Uh, this, is, this is the report that Comptroller uh, Jason Mumpower released right here, Tennessee Comptroller of the Treasury. Uh, this, this was released uh, a year ago, February 2023. And so you see here, enrollment at Tennessee State University has reached record highs in recent years, leading to an increased need for off-campus housing. Concerns from state officials about TSU's increasing reliance on off-campus housing, coupled with the university's history of poor fiscal practices, led the Comptroller's Office to begin a review of TSU on September 2nd to September 6, 2022. Uh, laid out the purpose of the review was to answer state officials' questions about the university's housing shortage 
and to support the General Assembly and TSU in identifying what is needed in the future for student success as well as the university's overall success. And so he goes on to say TSU management repeatedly falls short of sound fiscal practices, uh, blah, 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 blah. They question the available housing. Again, here's the whole th th that cracks me up. Okay, so you've underfunded Tennessee State for all of these years, and now you're questioning, well, how much longer are y'all going to need off-campus housing because you don't have enough on-campus housing because y'all have been shorting folks the money. And then if you're, if you, if you're concerned about all these so-called, again, sound fiscal practices, well, where in the hell have y'all been? If you said, well, seven years in a row, where in the hell were you in year two, three, four, five, six, and seven? Correct. And that's what's unfortunate. We need decisions that lead to trust. And, and again, with us being historically black, that means historically we have been a part of systems that have underfunded, undervalued, as well as disrespected uh, people who look black and brown. And so the actions that we need from our government, specifically in Tennessee, we need actions that build trust and not tear away our trust. We need actions that build to our excellence and not tear away at it and tear away at our legacy. Legacy. So it's very important for us to be involved as alumni. It's very important for us to be involved as community members within Nashville, within the state of Tennessee, but all over the globe. It's important for us to connect with issues like this because it's happening at Tennessee State University. But I can guarantee you that these actions will show up at the doorstep of many of our institutions across the country if we don't speak up and if we're not aware of how uh, us not lifting our voice and being educated about bills and how they shape our lives and how they move and, and right. law um, I mean, that can work against us. I mean, here's what's a joke. So go back to my iPad. Here they talk about several factors that have contributed to record enrollment at TSU and the housing shortage. They talk about a number of things, strategic corporate partnerships, and also renaissance at HBCUs. But then his, this is what, what to me is offensive. TSU's record enrollment is commendable. But the housing problems that have accompanied the record enrollment have led TSU to repeatedly seek state approval to lease off-campus housing, including hotels. They detail the explosion that's been happening in Nashville in the housing market. Uh, and, they, uh, and, and they go on and on and on, um, and, and, and they lay this out. But again, it, it's, it's, to me, it's offensive to say to somebody, um, perfect example, I'll use another example. I don't understand why you, why you keep coming to work sick? I don't have health care. Well, don't come to work sick. I don't have health care. So what do you want me to do? They're basically saying, oh, TSU, uh, this off-campus housing issue is a problem. Your numbers are exploding. Students want to come to your school. Guess what? We know for a fact they will never allow that at any of the University of Tennessee campuses. Never. Yeah, we, we Stand up for that. And, never, and that's never, issue. never. Yeah, that's the issue. We deserve the same as our peer institutions. And so historically, we have not received what our peer institutions have received. And so, again, let me make it very clear. When there are challenges that an institution faces, it is very important that we take accountability for those challenges and we make changes to make them better. But we must speak also of what support we need to create all of the opportunities that our students deserve. Our students don't deserve to have to be activists. Our students don't have to, they don't deserve to have to, in these moments, worry about the legacy of their degree and the legacy of the university that they so proudly chose to attend. Uh, real quick here, this is again from the Comptroller's Report. Uh, this shows you housing capacity. 2017, the housing capacity was 2,960. Housing occupancy was 3,098. They had enough rooms to cover everybody. But you see how all of a sudden, you know, again, going, going, going. Now, all of a sudden, 2022, housing capacity, 3,680. Housing occupancy, 4,961. That's 1,300 students. Uh, and so... Any other, I can guarantee you, the University of Tennessee, any of all of those campuses in Tennessee would love to see that sort of uh, excitement about their campuses, but these Republicans don't want to give the money to Tennessee State. Questions from my panel, Dr. Julian Malvo. She is an economist, president emerita of Bennett College and author out of D.C. Dr. Amakongo Dabinga, senior professorial lecturer at School of International Service, American University out of D.C. Derek Jackson, Georgia State representative uh, out of Atlanta. Julian, you go first. Uh, first of all, brother, thank you for your advocacy. It's so extremely important. 
I'm not. I, I need to understand what the composition of this Tennessee Board of uh, Governors of who, when, when the TSU's board is dissolved, they're going to put this education board over it. Now, who is on this education board, and are they inclined to be sympathetic HBCUs? Well, here's what's well, well, actually. So let me. Here's what's going on. First and foremost, the Senate bill wants to gut the entire board. What we're what we're hearing is that the House. They want to negotiate half of the board appointed by the governor. But you've got some folks for Tennessee State who want that reduced to three. We're trying to talk to the the Black Caucus to find out what's going on. So we reached out to the Black Caucus chair. Apparently, Tennessee State Representative Harold Love uh, is also a leading figure in these negotiations. And so we're trying to find out because Love says... Uh, Love apparently says that, well, the number is going to be three, but in the House bill, it doesn't specify that number. Uh, is that correct, Mr. Galbraith? That's correct. And and so that's what we're pushing for. Again, more faces, more voices that we can trust. Um, in this season of transition, those of you may know, we are also in the search of the next university president. So in this season of uncertainty, we definitely need faces that we can trust in, in those spaces of governance. Uh, this is the current ex- uh, Board of Trustees uh, of Tennessee State. Uh, you see right here, uh, uh, the folks here. So you got 10 members, including a faculty trustee, uh, as well as a student trustee. And so these are the current members uh, of the Board of Trustees. I'm a Congo. Well, speaking of this, we've been talking about disruption, particularly in this last segment. And I appreciate you, sir, for all of the great work that you're doing. How has this affected the students there? Are they are they actively protesting? Is it causing a disruption in terms of how they're able to just have their classes? How are they reacting to what's happening right now? The first is is we definitely have outstanding student leaders. They are on the front line of all of the issues. And so, unfortunately, they have had to spend a lot of time advocating and, and serving as activists and lobbyists for Tennessee State University. But their work is to make the experience of the other students as normal as possible. And so that's what the goal is, is to keep the students engaged and educated. But we have to remember that their number one reason for attending Tennessee State University is to be educated. Right. Uh, Derek? My question is around, um, do you see this attack uh, just like uh, in Mississippi, you know, they came after Mississippi uh, Valley State University, Elkhorn, Jackson State. Do you see TSU Um, in this same fight uh, as we continue to fight against those who want to defund uh, HBCUs, defund all things DEI, all things CRT, anything that's, you know, black education related? I believe that our state legislators have an idea that they are supporting Tennessee State University, but without understanding how it feels to alumni, how it feels to students, how it feels to the administration, how it feels to the entire body of Tennessee State University, you're doing something to us instead of doing something for us. And so I think that um, they would love to not feel that anything is racist and not feel like anything is abusive or uh, aggressive or excessive, But sometimes, especially in these times when we're speaking of money that we're owed, especially in these times when we are continuing our great legacy, it feels punitive at times. And so we want to just make sure that we can have dialogue and we can have those conversations that are collaborative uh, instead of conversations of blame and shame. We want to make sure that we can step up to the plate and take accountability. But we definitely don't want to tarnish our great name. Well, let me also let me also make clear this same legislature came up with a billion dollars to, p- to build a damn sports stadium for the Tennessee Titans, but they owe Tennessee State $500 million. They won't give Tennessee State the full $500 million. The governor has talked about, oh, $250 million. No, the committee made it clear. They've been underfunded $500 million. If you can find a billion for a billionaire sports team owner, well, damn it, you can find $500 million for Tennessee State. Absolutely. Well said. And and we're grateful for our partnership with the Tennessee Titans. But definitely we need that money over at Tennessee State University. 
Uh, so, look, we certainly appreciate it. Again, we're going to be uh, in Nashville. It's going to be a news conference at 11 a.m. next Monday. Uh, look forward to that. We're partnering with um, uh, alumni and students. We'll be all Black Star Network will be on the ground broadcasting that. Our other partners, Reverend William Barber, Repairs of the Breach, Black Voters Matter, Until Freedom, uh, Rainbow Push, Coalition with Reverend Frederick Haynes, who's the CEO. Uh, and so uh, in the next hour, Reverend Barber will be joining us talking about that because, uh, as we said, this is is bigger than Tennessee State. The concern that we have is that today it's Tennessee State. Tomorrow it could be another HBCU. We already saw how Jackson State University was being screwed by the folks in Mississippi. We need to understand this is a significant issue that could impact HBCUs across the South where Republicans have super majorities and where most of our HBCUs are. And so we appreciate your work. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me and thanks for all the work that you've done. I have something I want to tell you. I am running for president. Of the United States? Holy. I'm paving the road for a lot of other people looking like me to get elected. Brooklyn's first black representative. You're about to make history. You're going to be president? You ain't no man. Maybe we should find your mother. All you got is your one vote. You sound just like every other politician. Do I look like every other politician? Freedom! Truly, you can't win. And why can't I win? I have an opportunity to make a difference. Creation! This isn't a campaign. It's a joke. The only thing anybody's going to remember is that there were a bunch of black folks who made fools of themselves. Too much suffering. And I don't know how to not try. We're living it proud. I don't think I'm special. I just want to remind people what's possible. We need something that's going to make some noise. The Black Panthers and Shirley Chisholm. It's like thunder and lightning. I'm going to force all the politicians to be held accountable. You won't do all that. I'm a school teacher from Brooklyn. Harriet was just a slave. Rosa was just a domestic. What is it you do for a living again? Please!